We got Tajay, episode 80. Car Why am I yelling so much? Carry the culture show. Tajay, Mighty Souls of Mischief, Hieroglyphics Crew, Oakland, California, by way of Pittsburgh, I think. Hey, hey, yes, yes, yes. We got the fam in Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. What up, baby? What's good, man? How you doing? Man, chilling, dude. Actually, chill really chilling, man. Settling into this part two of the, of the panoramic view, you know what I'm saying, though? But chilling, chilling. <laughs> nah, good. Before we get started, got a couple of ground rules to get out the way. If you got questions for Tajay, please use the questions feature. That way I can pull them up rather than using the comments. You can pull them up and then everybody can see them. Also, just like on the page, if you get any fuck shit in the comments, I will block your ass and send you home. <laughs> Are you undefeated, man? You Matumbo out here, man. Yeah, I'm <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I I'm like when they, I'm the chase down block, nigga. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, but nah, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, unfortunately, it's a, it's, it's a necessary evil. So, but hopefully we won't have to do that. So, um, yo, how are you maintaining with all this yeah. shit going on right now? You know what, man? I just, we, we really locked in and got a program at the house, man. And um, fortunately, you know, my, my regular job as, as an architectural designer, like, I can do that from the crib. So, you know, when, when the kids are at home, I was, I was able to be home. And now that they're back in, I can still, you know, handle my business and, and, and go snatch, snatch the kids up and stuff like that. So it's, it's been, I mean, I'm saying this from a position of, like, great privilege, right? You know what I'm saying? I got a job that I could do to the face. I don't got to worry about nobody breathing on me <laughs> you know what i'm saying though but but really we we just got on a program and we stayed on it man and what's crazy I, I sold my home and moved during the middle of this so now i'm in a different part of town and everything's kind of walking distance i was kind of on an island before right uh oh, okay so now it's even better man we we riding bikes and walking and even using them little lime scooters and all that kind of stuff man so it's 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 been cool i really miss rapping but I, you know, it ain't the same. I did about three or four shows and they were well attended, but it ain't, when you can't really get in the mix with people, you know what I'm saying though? And you know, we, our whole thing is merch, right? So after we hop off stage, I'm hopping off, I'm selling t-shirts and all that. When you can't really, you know, interface with people, it's a whole different feeling, man. It's like, I might as well just did something via satellite and then, you know, emailed, you know, sent you, sent you the merch. So I'm gonna wait until the pandemic cool down before we can really do it. I mean, even the high road day, we had a big smoke session and all that, but uh, you know, we had to keep a certain amount of social distance and shit. It's just like hip hop ain't a socially distant thing at all. There's nothing, there's nothing, nothing socially distant about hip hop. I mean, you can do it by yourself, but really, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a communal thing. Right. And Absolutely. so, you know, e even graffiti, I mean, fools bomb by themselves when they're really trying to get up and it ain't trying to, you know, but, but, right. but really even graffiti, you go out with the crew and, and share a brew and, you know what I'm saying? The black book, black book one, session. You all up yeah. in your faces. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Battles. You up yeah. in somebody like yeah. And, and none of it. Ain't none of it. Ain't none of it. Solo action. So I really miss rapping. But I, as far as live, but I've been making. I got ooh almost three albums in the can. So I'm I'm gonna keep keep dropping. You know. Um, but I why drop them when I can't go perform them? You feel me? That is what a lot of people have been telling me, yo. Like Apathy got a missile in the books that he's had. He's been sitting on. Elder Sensei got a joint, uh, or oh, Artifacts joint supposed to be coming out. What? Yeah, oh, oh, pr pr produced by Buckwild. Come on, okay, all right. I yeah, might yeah, have yeah, to yeah. go get, get a, 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 a polo, a cookie sweatshirt, and uh, you know what I'm saying, though, and, and, and a five panel and get out here and really, ah! really represent. That's yeah, crazy, you know, that's like yeah, a, yeah, that's yeah, a high school dream right there, right there. Yeah, Thank yeah, wow. so, yeah, it's dope. I. I I, I actually have it and it's great and and but it's supposed to, it was supposed to be out like yeah um, niggas just drop that kind of shit though they be like yeah I actually have it uh yeah, just like, you don't know but uh, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, I feel I, you I know I, it's I, dope I know I, it's dope I, I, I'll shoot it to you man it's 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 ridiculous it's got Afro on it uh rap cat it's it's twelve oh so it's real rapping going on ten to eleven joints of of just fire cuts and scratches I mean like just Jersey like fucking there's a song just about like Jersey shit it's just dope it's just, it, it takes like when you hear this shit. It takes you all the way back. But the thing is, he's like, yo, I mean, they have some label issues, but he was like, even if it came out right now, he goes, I, it, it was ready right now. He goes, I wouldn't want to do nothing because look at yeah, this shit. Yeah, you can't perform it. It really, and especially, you know, with cats like the Artifacts and even Hyro and stuff, like Europe is a big part of it too. So it's like, you really want to get out there and do the damn thing. And if, if they don't lock down, it, it's really not cool, you know? And it, 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 it's, it's really a trip because it's, it's, I think it's making us more swift and able to, you know, think around our problems and all that kind of stuff. And right. also, we got time to get our pin game up, you know? 
So that that's important right. because you know I think with this whole new thing where you just dump, 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 it makes it so there's a lot of cool joints out there, but no bodies of work, right? So it's a lot of you know. Yeah, I can fill up my playlist all day long, but yeah. Can I can I listen to an album complete? complete Man, and, and we from that era where albums were the thing. You sit, you know, you might get a, a, a fifty sack. You know what I'm saying? Don't roll roll three blunts. And by the time you the album is done, you know, you're like, damn, that was a whole experience. You might ride, you might drive listening to that whole thing too. You know, let, let's go out to the hills or something. But now it's like, it's man, there's so many joints, you know, especially I'll say that East Coast, like the Ransom, Rome Streets, you know, your boys Griselda. Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm saying, you know, but but Yeah, I know what you're saying, but that, there, that's there's okay. a whole, there's a whole like, it's like a diamond studded army coat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, like 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 street jiggy type shit that, that I'm that I'm loving, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not I'm not mad. I just it, it's there's so much dumping. I don't get time to sit with a project before it's something else. I mean, even RJ Payne, I'm like, dude, it's deadly, right? So raw, but I can't I can't I couldn't even name I mean I know uh beautiful paint, you know, or, or leatherface. Like I know the names of the projects, but I can't say, hey, beautiful pain three is my shit. Or this because it's so much shit, and the way the phone aggregates it and all that kind of stuff, you know, it, it's very hard to to just latch on to one body of work. And you, and you almost have to like force yourself. Look, like, I'm like, I think for me, I'm listening to music all day long, like just people submitting shit and stuff and trying to pump new stuff. And it's like, I gotta sometimes if I really want to sit with something, I gotta say, okay, fuck listening for 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 the page and for YouTube. Yeah. I gotta sit down with the L. Show these are my people's. I think this is gonna be a good album. Let me let me let me like vibe with this man and just put it to the side. There's been a couple of weeks where I'm like, yo, I'm not listening to no more new music because I'm liking this shit right now and I'm vibing with this. You know, what I'm I've saying? Been doing but you have to make a conscious effort now, though. You know, what I'm saying to really do that though, because otherwise, like you said, it's just like they just come. It's like playing. It's like playing Galaga. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's getting real close. It's getting real close to the bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so. I've been listening to a lot of Dark Low lately, man. That shit's been keeping me uh, sane. I, you know, uh, I, I I like, I can't front, man. I, you know, maybe it's because I'm a nerd, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but I be liking to listen to a lot of the hardcore shit. Like, when I'm driving and shit, or maybe, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in an environment that's not necessarily all shiny, right? So maybe it's like how LeBron listens to whatever before a game or something. Before I go out and shit, I like listening to, man, the Dark Low shit. Like, v Don is probably my favorite producer right now. He just got that that ethereal gangster shit. You know what I'm saying though? But I, you like I mean, that you like that meme. You ever seen that meme where it's like me listening me like on my way to my nine to five job listening to like you know uh, yeah I have seen that or... exactly. It is it yeah. is like that man. You know my, my my coworkers be looking at me like oh okay he's vibing right now because we don't talk at work. You know we draw all day. So I mean yeah, it, it ain't no talking going on. And so, you know they listen to uh what's that shit called uh it's not lo-fi, but kind of lo-fi. Chill mix all day. You're like, my, my office is like a spa when you walk in. It's right, that right, right, right. Just, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, nah, man, I'm about to fall asleep in front of this computer if I, if I don't put some shit on. Man. So I listen to a lot of, uh, man, right now, Dark Low and Shady Nate been my, my the main cats I've been listening to, man. Just, okay. So you, so you, so yeah, you, so you, have to, man, and that's dope, you know, that like, that you're rocking with like, you know, like, current shit and stuff like that. I mean, I think there's some artists, you know, that are, you know, from your, from your uh, era, like, you're like, nah, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's dope. That, that's wild to me, but maybe I think a lot of them artists don't make music right now either, though. You know what I'm saying, though? A lot of them are like kind of in the, I would say not, not the twilight of they maybe the twilight of the career, or they're just not feeling it right now. For me, I'm like, I, I went on a spree where I downloaded, you know, Nice and Smooth and Steezo and, you know, I can yell first thing, you know, all that. But then I listen to it once or twice, like, yeah, this was my shit. But then after that, I'm like, I, I know the ins and outs. And it's like watching a movie again, right? You know, that you know all the words to. Right, right, right. It's cool. And then also, because it's solo action going on, like, that's something you vibe with the homies with. Are you in the club or something? You feel me? And and, and you listen to it like, oh, this is our show. Remember we were that? But, you know, like, by myself, I'm like, it's cool. I played it. I got the little reminisce feeling. But... It's so much good new shit. I'm like, I'm not, you know, I mean, even you know, I watch your page. I'm like, it's cats. It's cats from back in the day that I hadn't heard of because we was out here, right? 
that I'm like, damn, these niggas are spitting, you know? So right. it's, it's right. so much good shit. I try to just stay up on the new shit, not, not because it's new, just because I haven't heard it before, you know? Right. I mean, there's right. hell of probably mid- mid 2010 to 2020 shit that I ain't heard, you know, like the, uh, what we call that, the teens stuff, you know, boom, bap, yeah. bap too, that I ain't heard too. So I'm, I'm just getting up on a lot, you know? And, and as far as rapping, like, you know, Hyro, we be trying to say shit other niggas have not said. So it's important that you hear what everybody said, or they're going to be like, oh, that's that same shit from, oh, he said that on da, 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 da. And that, that's like a chink in your armor. And I mean, it's, there's so much shit now that it's, e you know, it's easy to cross game or there's so much shit somebody gonna say no thought is original right, but right, right. i want to make sure that i'm i'm when i have a thought in my head i can go back through the files and be like oh yeah nobody said no shit like this you know right right no that's important that's a good point because i you know i hear shit i'm like yo he said that on the such and such joint people you know people People remember it, you know what I'm saying? The North remembers. Like, <laughs> like we remember. Yo, um, I wanted to, we're gonna jump around. I wanted to ask you because there's a lot of stuff that you it seemed like you got your hands into, and I, I, I went through your wiki page and stuff, and I wanted to ask you. Um, first of all, is your wiki page yours? I mean, did you do that? Nah, I mean, but it's accurate. It's accurate to a large extent. I don't think. I mean, I think it says something like. You know, Opio A plus introduced me to Opio and not the other way around. And I introduced Castafesto. But aside from that, it's pretty it's pretty accurate and, and, and pretty current, right? It, it goes all the way up to like rap noir. Yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. So yeah. Let, let me ask you a question. Cause in it it said the, the first paragraph it says part of it said part of soldier mischief. It says underground rap, underground group soldier mischief and part of the alternative hip hop collective hieroglyphics. And that term always makes me cringe, yo, because I'm like, what the fuck? Like, so maybe I, so that's why I was like, oh, you know, because Drez from Black Sheep, his his page is all fucked up. He got like people saying Chi Ali is his brother on his shit. So I was like, yo, let me see. <laughs> yeah, Wait, yeah, is that, that true? No. <laughs> him, right. him Fess and Chi Ali ain't, ain't triplets? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Big up Drez. But so um, how do you feel about that term? I mean, I, in, in general. I, I hate all terms, man. You know, even like, like weak rap is still hip hop. Weak ass rappers are still hip hop, right? You know, like what your goal is and in getting into it might be different. You might just be doing it for the money. Or I'm not a trap rapper, I'm a trapper. If you're rhyming over beats, that that's hip hop. So to be, to call it alternative or whatever, that's the industry being able to pack it, you know, trying to package it. I mean, for, we I always talk about this. I remember we was watching MTV when we was kids and there was like, there's a new type of rap called hardcore rap. Groups like Eric B and Rakim, EPMD and da da da, and I'm like, huh? What, what the hardcore? But then, I mean, it's 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 the industry which we unfortunately don't control, control packaging and marketing and and splitting everything up, and they do that with everything because right, it's capitalism, and we're trying to sell products. But I, yeah, I hate that. What are we the alternative to? I didn't understand that. I read that. I was like, yo, he didn't write this shit. This part right here. Nah, because like, it was it was it was stuff that was accurate. But I was like, yo, like alternative. Alternative what? Like it didn't make it didn't make no sense to me. So I, maybe if I was it. over like rock and roll beats or something, it would be alternative because it would be alt rock with some rap over it. But I can't imagine like the concept of alternative hip hop is very. It's like kind of classist a little bit and a little bit. I won't say racist, but like prejudice. Kind of, you know, like that's one of them buzzwords. Is bees like like oh you mean hip hop that young white kids might like? When I'm like, dude, young white kids by the majority of all hip hop. So you you see what I'm so e even the hardcore shit even the even the you know, the T Grizzliest of the Grizzly and, and, and the Griseldaest of the Griselda. Love, right? It's just all, it's just young white kids for the most, because they're the majority of the folks here buying it and the majority of the folks in the position to purchase. So it's really weird to slap that label on us, especially when, when you listen to our subject matter and all that kind of stuff. It's not. I mean, even if they say jazzy hip hop, I'm like, okay, cool. Cause you know, we, we had, we came out over some jazz beats, but even that, I'm like, mm. yeah, but, but it's still, that 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 is true, but that even still pigeonholes an artist. It's like okay, now it's like if it's not over jazz, it's like I mean, I never, I never, yo. Know, remember when when shit was come, back in the day, yo. Like even on the same bill, you would have NWA. I've seen them. You've had you have yeah. NWA, Public Enemy, X Clan, yeah. LL. Big yep. Daddy Kane and EPMD on the same fucking shit. And, and nobody would say that was they were from anything. They, they, they wouldn't be like, this is that. I mean, it, it's, it's the industry trying to sell it. Like, even the concept where they try to say we conscious. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I might be conscious in real life, but my music ain't necessarily conscious. 
you know uh it, yeah it's 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 them trying to sell something and yeah. and I, I guess that's cool if you need that but i don't i don't i don't feel that way and i really think uh, it it kind of i don't even like the concept like west coast rap or female rap or you know I mean? what the like that shit is weird as hell to me and it's no need to be adding those kind of uh you know uh modifiers to the shit right, right. i mean and if the female rap thing always gets me because I'm like, who cares, yo? This ain't football, like or basketball, where like there's some physical, ma major physical differences. I'm like, I, people are like, yo, what you, your, who's your top female? I'm like, yo, some of my top MCs, yeah, are like, are you know this and that. It's, it's, I don't make that distinction. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? It's not a, that shit is silly to me, man. Like, and, and I said it, I don't like imagine if people said black rappers or what, you know what I mean? Like people be, be up in arms. So I, I mean, I understand the women who do rap. That are like, this is bullshit, man. Why you keep putting me in this category? I got Saw Rock on my thing. I, I just did some stuff with Nappy Nina, man. And I like I'm not and I'm not trying to be like, I'm a guy, I don't I don't see gender. Like, nah, but it's like I if I have you on, you know, Psalm One, whatever, if I got you on a record, it's because you dope. Right. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Like I even me and Psalm One did one where it was like it was a sexual kind of rap song. You feel what I'm saying though? But it wasn't like us going back and forth. And even then she was on some some player shit like I'm back in the hose and the dude, you know what I'm saying though. So even then, I I, I just that that kind of, I can imagine that irking some a a, a, a woman who raps that could be like, what? Well, come on, that's what you you gonna do me like that? How can that's you... corny. I mean, I hear it all the time. It's corny. Yeah. Like people are like oh, my best, my favorite female MC. I'm like, what's what is the distinction for? Like Jean Grey is dope because she's Jean Grey, yeah. Not because she's she's she holds it down in any cipher. Bahamadia yeah. holds it down in any cipher, dude. Like, Dude. You know what I'm saying? Like that, I don't know. That's how I've always seen it, man. Like, cause it's not a sport. It, I it's mean, not, as far as uh, yes. uh, it's, it's not like, wrestling. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like there's no physical component to it. It's like chess, or or anything that is meant to like. Nobody says female programmer or female lawyer or female doctor or any of that. Word, kind of. you feel me? No. Yeah. Word, yo. What does one do? You just said you're a nerd. What does one do with a, a degree in anthropology? What did you do with your degree in anthropology? <laughs> and, and what what made you be like, okay, anthropology, like, 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 what's the deal? Because and because then I had to do the knowledge a little bit. I was like, oh, it said it's four sections or what? So what's the deal with just with that and you? You know, to me, the reason I chose anthropology was just the most interesting classes that I took were all in anthropology, and I just decided, you know, like I was hella high one night, was like, man, I'm just gonna do anthropology. It it. Because most of it was maybe after my second year. That's real profound. You should have lost it in me. the butt. I've got to keep it a bean, right? So <laughs> I was sitting, I was like, man, this shit is the most interesting. Let me do it. But I mean, it's really just the study of cultures almost from a Western perspective, right? Uh, it, it would be the same as sociology, except you're comparing other cultures outside of the West, meaning really outside of white, white Western culture to, to Western culture. But I mean, I like. It had, you know, there was classes on making stone tools and arrowheads. There are classes on, like, um, you know, going to other places. Like, I had to learn three languages. You know, you have to take two languages. So I took Spanish and Swahili. But so there was language component. There was a component about map making and understanding your surroundings and going into somewhere and being able to sort of look at the different rules and the way people interact. So it was interesting. But in the end, unless you're going to be a professor or an archaeologist, it's not, it's not really applicable to, like, an everyday job thing. So... For me, it was good because I went to uh, architecture, which is like understanding how people live and then creating spaces that that are conducive to their, their living. And, you know, everybody lives differently. Right. You know, so I had studied how people lived in different countries, different cultures, et cetera. And that sort of influences my architectural style when I get to actually flex some style. For the most part right now, the way it is, everybody wants, hey, get granite countertops, stainless open kitchen, you know what I'm saying, though, uh, a little in-law unit. Like, everybody wants the same thing because that's the times that we're in. But right. I think I get raw and get, get you know, more more clientele that is that trust my vision, I'll be able to do a lot more. And I'm doing a lot of, like, restaurants and, like, factories and cannabis uh, cannabis production spaces, too. So I'm, I'm able to flex a little bit more on that because they're just like, yo, I, it's just easier than somebody house. Somebody house, they're like, yo, I want. This, you know, I want this Viking. Yeah, ring. they got their vision, to, you know what I'm saying? Wolf, you know, this wolf stove, this fridge here. 
et cetera. This is going to be the where my daughter, you know, is the playpen, you know, whatever. You're just following directions, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, you know, you be trying to sneak something in, like, how about if we, but that's it. For the most part, they're coming to you with an idea. And I've only done probably ground up, I'll say, maybe three buildings completely from the ground up. Everything else I'm doing is remodels, additions, or like uh, commercial shit, restaurants and shit like that. Yo, so it, it seems like based on kind of how you grew up, at least like both of your parents were are educators, right? Right? And, yeah, um, yeah. My mom, it, it, my mom was a professor. My dad worked in a uh, sort of administration. Okay, yeah. so like, it seems like being a rapper was never just like that was it. Like it didn't seem like you know. I mean, some cats, you know, like you know, everyone has their own story, right? Yeah. You know, some cats are like, yo. I heard this shit. I mean, I, I'm, I was going to, this is, I want to rap. For, this is, I'm a, but it seems like based on how you grew up and everything and your shit, that was just something extra for you. Am, am, am I wrong? Or maybe I'm wrong. He, he left us. Alternative rapper. Tajay, that West Coast internet be killing me. You're going to have to come back in. All right. He needs to, and we'll, oh, this shit, Craig, he's coming back. Boom, 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 boom. Do you want, here he comes. I heard you though, I heard you, I heard you. Uh, yeah, for me, am I, am I back here, are we back? Uh, for me, Rapping has always been something I love doing, but A plus is really was like the helmsman. You know, like I don't think like as a kid, like A plus was like a man. You feel what I'm saying though? I don't know if it's because he's an immigrant and he had a lot of autonomy or because he had older siblings and shit, but he always knew like, yeah, this is what we're doing. And it, you know, and it's kind of like, okay, well shit, I'm I'm the homie. I'll I'll fuck with you on this, you know. But he was the one that taught niggas how to, you know, taught me. I'm saying everybody else, like how to count bars and Yo, you come in right here. Okay, the, the topic of this is this. You know, like, I'm talking about when we were 12 years old, 11 years old, you know. So, for me, rapping has always been, okay, something that I love doing and something that I um, that 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 I love doing with the homies, but it's never been, like, a be-all, end-all career. And it took me to a hell of years. And, you know, we're coming up on 30 years of professional rap, right? I mean, really, with Burnt, which was 91, I'm at 31 years, really. So it took me about to about 10, 15 years into my career where I was like, oh, this is really what I do. Because I've always had a job. I've always had other hustles going on and shit. But I think that's me trying to hide from my destiny, right, as a rapper, you know. So even now, it I, I do architecture. But for real, like, whenever I get in this booth and shit, I'll be like, I'm a rapper. Like, I'm saying, the producers be like, yeah, what the fuck is he talking about? And I'll be like, ah, oh, shit, I'm, this is what I do. The other shit is just things that I do as well and you know, maybe I'll do as seriously when I'm, you know, 40 years from now or something like that. But right now, I'm like, dude, I really rap, so let me rap. And that's when I started really getting on, getting my catalog up and, and working on different styles and, you know, just trying to continue. Because I think there's a stigma that I think a lot of us are shaking is that there's some age limit to rapping. Like, and, and I don't, only in rap shit, though, right? It, it really rap, is only in rap, in, though. In, you don't see that in rock. Yeah, BB like King, rock until he died. Yeah, BB yeah. King rock rock until he passed away, right? So, the, the, like, I, I I had to really get over that little. Hum I think also, you know, like when you turn thirty, you think you old, and then now, you know, I don't even know nobody that's thirty. Like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> take me to the forty plus party, man. I don't even yeah, want to be yeah, around yeah, yeah. these thirty year olds, right? So, I think that there's these all these weird societal constraints we put upon ourselves. Like, hey, I'm supposed to have everything together. My career is supposed to be at this level, etc by this age and if it's not then we like fuck that shit that ain't that ain't even me but that's i think our ego trying to protect us and you know your ego is not really your homie right so you got to cool. you got to really do what you love and 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 live for that and so it it took me probably 10 to 15 years into my career before i was really like oh this is really what i do and even then i've always had a like i've always hustled i've always had jobs i've always been going to school and everything and I think that's even me as just a person saying, hey, I need to have a safety net just in case. But now 
in hindsight and looking at it, nah, what I need to have is all that shit in place so that I can rap. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, okay, I, my crib is taken care of. I got businesses. They bring in money. Now I can press that vinyl. Now I can make these t-shirts. Now I can make these Carhartt jackets or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can do all that shit because I got money coming in regardless. And then once I do it, that shit be selling out. So it, but, but you got a, a unjust to do the other half of rap noir. He said, feed the dream is his concept, right? So it's like, you got to have something to feed the dream until the dream has its own sort of legs. And I mean, I probably could live a cool life just rapping, but I have bigger, you know, I got kids and, you know, and siblings and, you know, it's, it's cats that I'm mentoring and putting through school and shit like that. Like, and that shit costs. So I need, I need to have some bread and I need, and I need to not be rapping for my, like, Jay-Z, you know, I'm, I'm not a super big Jay-Z fan, but he talks about how the second album that came out with Sunshine and all that, what is it, Hard Knock? I don't know. He, you know, you got I'm seven albums. Sure. But, yeah. this, is a, this is a detour. But he was saying his regret, you know, the first song he wrote for that was Streets Was Watching, and then he w took it in a more pop direction because he thought that that was what he needed to chase after, right? And that is one of his regrets. You know, and this is a billionaire saying this thing, right? Mm. So I'm like, I don't want to be rapping for money. Because and feeling like, oh, I need this one. Oh, they going this one gonna tear the clubs up. You know, oh mm -hmm. yeah, they, this is gonna be the one. This my year. Like, fuck all that, man. Just make some slap. If fools like it, they do. If they don't, they don't. And then the same way we dig for samples and all that shit. Like the shit that we like, we be sampling shit that wasn't no hit when it was out. You know what I'm saying? Though, like we not sampling Super Freak or right, right, you right, know right, what right. I'm saying? Ninety nine loop balloons or something like that. Even <laughs> though ain't nothing wrong with that. We sampling shit that we're just like, nigga, did you hear that shit? Oh my God. Not even the big James Brown songs. Niggas are sampling side James Brown songs and B sides and album cuts. So I just want to have a catalog where niggas come across and be like, have you ever heard of Taze? You know what I'm saying? Not even be able to pronounce my name. Like, have you ever? This dude, I don't know if it's French rapper. It, you know, like, let me just check this shit out and check it out and be like, oh, this nigga's cold. And I feel like because we make this sort of, uh, hey, what is, just like no school music, you know what I'm saying though, or golden, what you know, like ah man, no way to put you make it. you make hip hop, yo. I make, I make hip hop, but I don't try to make it about the certain times, right? Right? right. It's just yeah. uh, classical hip hop, or you know what I mean though. I I hope that whenever somebody picks it up, they listen to it and be like, oh shit, you know, like even like I don't even be fucking with too many similes and metaphors about the current time. Like, I'm not about to have euphoria metaphors on my shit or, you know, mm. some shit. I mean, maybe about the Mandalorian because, you know, Boba Fett for life. But, you know, yeah. you know like, I'm not going to do too much shit where it's even about what's currently going on. Like, you know, like, I think that may have been what, when you look at, like, Dots, right? A lot of the stuff they did, we love it because we grew up on all that shit. Half them similes and metaphors, somebody that's maybe even five years younger than us is like, what the, you know, what, you know, they, they don't even know because it was about cartoons and shit that we grew up on <laughs> right, when we right, was right. kids. In the same way, we got another, a lot of the new rappers who rap about, you know, SpongeBob and all that. And I'm like, I, I've never seen an episode of SpongeBob. I heard it's good. I'm just saying I've never seen an episode of it. I grew up on G.I. Joe, you know, so I, I try to keep my shit. I know I'm jumping around. You watch Batman movies? You have seen them? You, you know how you can't tell if Gotham City is in 1930 or in 2030. It's a, I want to make my music like that, right? To where, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's classic. It's a, but, yeah, but, timeless, yeah. Cro like, timeless. There we timeless go. That's shit. it. Timeless. Yeah, yeah. Word, word. Now that makes perfect sense. That's a good That's a good analogy you, you use. Yo, so what's the, po the biggest, like, positive and negative of being Tajay of Souls of Mischief? Like, known and this and that and being, like... You know what I'm saying? What's a big one of the, you know? I would say the only negative, nah, it ain't no, man, I live a great life, bro. Like, I, I don't want to write no book or I don't really talk about it not a lot because I don't want niggas to feel like I'm bragging or like I think I'm hella raw or nothing like that. But, dude, ain't no negatives, man. Like, I'm not famous enough where it matter. I'm famous enough to get the hookup. Like, oh, that's you? Oh, Mm, take this shit, blood. Hurry, 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 take it. But I'm not famous like where motherfuckers is mobbing me. You know, I'm more like, do you know who that was? Oh, you never, hold on, let me show you, you know? So I ain't never hit a level of fame where it's been bothersome to my life or my family. I can go out with my family. High Rose, like Fight Club, you know? Like it'll be a motherfucker sitting next to you a whole plane ride. And at the end of the plane ride, they just roll up their fucking sleeve 
that have a hyro tattoo on their forearm. You know, and they won't even be like, can I get a flick? They just look at you like, nigga, I know you are. You know, like, yeah, yeah. you know, and so, so it ain't, it ain't no negatives, bro. Uh, I think maybe we had a lot of success commercial early, but because we didn't quit, it don't even matter. Like, I, if we took time off, I think in between all that shit, it might have been where we had this sort of fall off period. Mm. But I, okay, how about this? We had a lot of commercial set off set early and we quote unquote fell off early, right? And immediately went indie. We've been indie for since 1996. At, right after, yeah, right after the first job. Well, so, so after No Man's Land, right? 95. So since 1996 to now, so of a 30 year uh, career, 20, 27 of the years have been indie. So we've been making money, traveling, doing all the good shit. It ain't no, it ain't even no complaints. I have no complaints. Being in a group is tough, but like shit, that shit is also a blessing too. Cause I'm, I'm in a, a strong ass group, you know, it's like mighty Morphin power rangers or some shit like, or Voltron, you know what I mean? Like I'm that, there's no weak ass. There's, uh, I'm not trying not to say no names. Just to say there's no weak links in our crew. You know what I'm saying though? I've said that numerous times that I was like, yo, I, I, you can, you can line up, line y'all up against any crew, man. I, it's, that's head, head to heads. I, ridiculous, yo. I, there's no, when I see the picture, everybody like, yo, like, and, I, and there's crews where there is a weak link. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Some of the, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah, your squad is crazy, yo. Man. <laughs> I'm super appreciative of that. And I, I think the best part about it is also is the same thing. Like, I've never gotten so famous that I give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Though? Like, I don't care. You see me working, you should be happy. You know what I'm saying, though? Like, oh, this nigga still sane and out here doing his thing and everything. Oh, okay. Oh, this dude got a whole other career. Like, ain't not, I, you know, that I've never got, we never got so big that it mattered if I, like, I drive a Tacoma and a Civic. A, a, a O2 and an O2 Tacoma and an O6 Civic, ah. you know, four door. You feel what I'm saying, though? I mean, you know, my, my lady got the got the got the AMG kit. You know what I'm saying? Let the lady stunt. You know what I'm saying, though? But me, I do. I and no, but nobody looks at me like T. What you doing here in this fucking bucket, doggy? They're like T. Nigga, come smoke, come fuck with us. We oh shit, bust some shit. We cyphering right here. There's no there's no weird shit where I feel like I got to live up to. You know, keep up with the Joneses, and that's also probably because we live here too. We never left, right? So, right. so it, even if I if I did come through in the Maserati or anything, you know what I mean? I I got the ability to do all that shit. You know what I'm saying? But if if why what it was what is going like? I'm setting the bar too high for myself. I'm setting myself up to get robbed or or crash my shit or you know right, right. disappointment, man. So I rather so 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 the high and the low are the same thing, right? The low would be. We, 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 we had a lot of success early. And to some, if you look at, fin not, even, not financially, because it's not financially. We make more money now than ever, right? But sort of uh, juice or whatever. Not even juice. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't got no, no negatives, bro. Just, it, I, I think the, the, the big thing early and the quote-unquote fall-off early was the best thing that happened to us because we went indie and, and have been going up steadily ever since. You know, like this year or 2020, I did shit with G-Rap and Pooba. Like, you, you feel what I'm saying? No, I, I just hit Red Man. I'm trying to get Red Man on another joint right now. You know, like, so I'm doing shit with cats and that are, and, and both G-Rap and Pooba are still them. They're, I'm not catching the, the prom queen after she done dropped seven babies and, you know, missing people <laughs> shit. You feel what I'm saying? No, like, right, right, is, right. that G-Rap verse, dude, I, I, but I got in the booth. I was like, no, sent that shit to G rap and he G rapped on me. Like, nigga, I am G. You, he, he's like, let me sit with it for a second. I was like, yeah, sit with that shit. You know what I'm saying? No, you know, because uh, nigga kind of was like, wait, well, spit it on that shit. You know, you might want to sit with that. Man, that nigga sent back that G rap. Like, this was one of the illest verses I've heard from him in dumbass long. You know what I mean? Like, that it was mind blowing. And then there's still shit in there I'm picking up. Like, what do you say? Uh, make them pucker up like they pond fishes. You know, like, you know, fish pucker up, right? Fish yeah, pucker. But he's talking about puckering up like you feeding them in the pond and they puckering up. You feel that? Yeah, like, when the, not the heart, just, right? when they're, yeah. not, not just puckering like the fish face, but the puckering up like you feeding, you know, like, it's a certain shit where, I mean, you know, stand tall like the Berlin Wall on Earl of Pearl limbs. Like, he, shit like that, to me, them kind of milestones help me understand that my trajectory, 
whether or not I'm insane. I could be Moon Knight. I don't care. I'm insane. I don't care. It's up though. You feel what I'm saying though? Like I, I when I when I'm like you know, Grand Agent, me Grand Agent and Poobah did one, and I was like, this is wild. You know, like damn, never did I even think that it would be possible to do a song with Grand Poobah. You know, and then to have Grand Poobah when it's like, cats be acting like Poobah wasn't that dude when he like. Everybody was bit a little bit of Grand Poo by oh, everybody. Yeah. He came with the All flavor, rappers. the style, everything. Everything. He was a total package, right? And he could even sing. He could sing. Think about that. Yeah. Before yeah. all the Drake and all that shit. So I feel like my my trajectory is this way. And then when you hear the new spitters, the I mean, not even the new, like like the Ransoms and the RJ Paynes and all this kind of, you know, dudes who really getting it in. And like, you like, oh, shit, we, we all in the dojo, right? Like, like. Old niggas is getting brolic a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, we still in the gym keeping it tight, hitting our little diamond push-ups and, you know, doing our little <laughs> rap spots and shit. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm juiced, man. I'm, I'm, there's no, I feel like the highest point is yet to be reached. This shit I'm working on with Breakbeat Lou, I'm like, damn, this is some of my best work. Now, whether or not anybody hears it, that's up to, I guess, me and my marketing prowess and shit, but I'll be thinking about that when I make the records and shit. Yeah, no, I feel you. I mean, like you got got to put it. Don't sit on it though forever, man. Like no, nah, it's gonna drop. It's gonna drop. I'm about to drop the me and architect, me and architect uh, joint uh, black tech. That one I'm I'm gonna drop. Uh, shit. I, I hopefully in the next couple months. I just got to do some videos, right? People don't listen to music; they watch music. So either I got to do a bunch of reels or something and chop it up. But it's just how it is. I if I drop a song, you know, I'll drop a song audio. I'll be like at a thousand views. I drop a, a a a reel or a little video on, and I'll be at five thousand in like six hours. Yep. So it's a it's a it's we you know I'm trying to figure out how to work the uh work the algorithm in yeah, the we right can way. We talk on it, y'all. Right now, yeah. reels is tell everybody. I don't know why motherfuckers don't do it. One minute yeah. or less, man. Reels. Yeah. Like your shit will be. You'll get like ten to twenty, and it's all people that aren't fucking with your shit already too. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. You get new engagement, and then you get you know. Uh, yeah. That, that that's, that's the so thing that's hard to get right now. That's what new they're engagement. pushing because they wanted to keep compete with TikTok, so that's why they're pushing it. IGTV. Yo, do something five minutes long. Post that shit. It'll be garbage. Yo, do it in one. Do it in five one minute joints. And they'll watch everyone. Yeah. Yeah. As a, as a real, but not as a video. As a yeah. real, because that's what they want. Yo, like I, that's all I post. Well, that's the, um, they say that the dudes who built casinos are, are, they use sort of casino gaming architecture for, um, for these, these, for TikTok. So that's why we scroll up and down. It's almost like a roulette wheel or something or, or, um, what's that shit called? Slot machine, right? Slot, just, slot machines. And I've, I've seen it and our, our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. You know, I, I'm trying to get out of that. And unfortunately I'm in a profession where we got to have a long attention span because there's, you know, every last light switch, every nail, every every light has to be placed in. But even I feel myself, I'm like, damn, my attention span is wild short. I'll start reading the book and get through like a chapter and a half and get sleepy and shit, you know? Right. Everything is, yeah, people want shorter, shorter. It's quick, 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 quick. I mean, like, that's why I tell people, like, even with intros, man, I tell artists, man, those, you got, like, I'm go crazy with, for me, if I hear a long intro, I'm, <laughs> I'm already gone, man. Like, that shit is, why? You yeah. know what I mean? But, um, Yo, one thing I want to ask you, what's up with the Hibiscus Garden shit, man? I I, I started digging, and I'm actually looking up, looking for a place to go in, in September. So I'm like, man. talk to me about that. So Hibiscus Garden, man, is this uh, hotel that I bought down in Panama, man. It's four acres on the beach. We got our own beach. We got horses. The, the area is known for surfing and scuba diving. Right now they got uh, orcas out there, so you can swim with the orcas. You can swim with uh, elephant sharks and manta rays and all that kind of stuff. It's good fishing. You could pull, you know, 200-pound tuna out the water off, off the little boat. You can go put some flip-flops on and go spear fishing. So, basically, I bought it in uh, 2017 and just been kind of keeping it as, like, a place I go to go right. And a lot of a lot of the people that I'm – Panama is not really tapped in the way people go to Tulum or, or, or Brazil or anything like that, right? So, most of my people that are coming are from Europe, Belgium. Germany, or they're from uh, Panama, actually the city. The, uh, the city has half the population of the whole country. So right now I'm teaming up with DJ12s and we're about to build, a, um, we're going to put a Neve board and an SSL board down there. We're about to build a venue that holds about 4,000. And, and we got, we, I, I just fixed my restaurant up. We're building some glamping tents. I'm about to, I'm starting to pool tomorrow, you know, so I'm, I'm building it up so that we can start hosting like, have you ever heard of Red Bull Bataya? Yeah. 
All right, so I want to start doing the Panama finals on my at my my venue. Uh, we talked to um, what's the brothers now. We talked to a few guys, but I guess I don't want to reveal. But we, we're gonna start doing a lot of reggae concerts down there, uh, and then I, we're gonna have this recording studio so that if you go down there, okay, you can record, you can perform, you can go scuba diving, you can go snorkeling, you can surf, all that shit, man. And my next door neighbor, he's got a. You there? Come on. Uh, I'm here. I mean, you there? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what my next door neighbor was doing before, but he's got he's got 160 acres next to my little four. And this guy's got a got an airport. There's also another hotel called uh, Catalina's Hideaway over on his his stuff. So I'm in a, I'm near a town called Santa Catalina and it's about 450 people. But we probably get that many tourists every day because they have all the scuba diving, snorkeling, uh, fishing and all that kind of stuff. So. It's cool, man. Check it out. Hibiscusgarden.com. We did a complete I, remodel. I went on the website. Now. On the website. It's, it's cool, man. So you can, um, I mean, I, you can, it's open right now. You can go there. Yeah, now, yeah it's right? open. It's, it's high season right now. In fact, next next month is um is uh, Carnival. So it's it's yanking right now, man. They send me pictures. the best time? Yeah, so you fly to Panama City? Flying to Panama City. It's six hours from Panama City, though. But the bus is like $11. So you get on the bus, you know, ride from from uh, Panama City to the spot, and then chill out there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Or you can rent a car, and it you know it might be five and a half hours drive, and then that's good because you can get around the little town where I'm at. Uh, yeah, no, I got. I already checked. It. I checked out the website, so it, you can go there. That's dope. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's popping, man. We got we got ten horses, so if you want to. You know, live your cowboy dreams. We can get out there and, and ride horses. But like, definitely the best thing I did is probably swim with the whale sharks and swim with the dolphins. And, um, you know, just, get man, it's so just being able to get away and be on vacation and not be party time constantly. You know, like you can chill. You know, it's mushrooms growing out there wild all around my land because my neighbors got, uh, they got uh, cows, you know what I'm saying? So I'd be picking, I'm talking about peas and peas of that shit. You know what I'm saying? But. It's it's cool, man. And then I, eventually, I want to build it up so we got a, a plant medicine area where we can do the ayahuasca retreats and the and the psilocybin retreats and all that. And then yoga is really big in there. And, and you know, we have a surfing yoga festival every year. So it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot going on down there. But it, when I say a lot, like the town is still four hundred fifty people. You know, like <laughs> yeah, no, but it's like I, I see. I like going to places. That nobody goes to, like on the lows type shit. Yeah. Now we're talking about this. I ain't gonna edit this all this shit out. It's like, y'all don't go there. But no, I like going to shit on the, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so when I, when I saw this, I was like, what? This guy got a fucking resort down here? Like, yeah, it's cool. And then we're gonna build the studio. I want it to be where, you know, no matter how big you are, like, I'm telling you, in the town that I'm in, if Jay Z's walking down the street, nobody even trying to take pictures of him. You feel what I'm saying, though? Yeah. They're like, hey, this guy kind of look like Jay Z. Okay, well, anyways, you know, let me go do my business. So I want to make it so that even the the biggest of artists can come out there, record, bring their whole family. You know, it's enough room. Right now we can fit about 40. We're building it out so we can fit 80. So you can bring your family, bring your band, everything, sit and chill, rent a spot for a month, have the whole spot to yourself. You know, I got one of the top, top I got the number one restaurant out there, you know, so bring, bring you the good food and shit. And, and, and you just chill and you come back with a project. You come back refreshed. You can film some Miami Vice ass. You know, fly fucking white sand beach videos if you want all that. Yeah, shit. but but affordable, right? So, underground cats can do it too. It don't gotta be you don't gotta be two chains or Drake to do it. You know. Yeah, no, I saw it because I I, I peeped and I saw it was like reasonable as far as um, price and stuff. Like word, yo, I, I'm gonna come out there. Yo. Let me know, man. You know, Maddie C from the source is an avid avid. You know, old school Maddie C. Uh, He's an avid surfer, so he's about to come out pretty soon. I think next month, man, I'm gonna meet him down there probably and, and, and go there, surf. With him. Is there a better time than like like weather wise than, than others to go it's back somewhere? We're I'm near the equator, so it's almost it's opposite, right? So right now it's summertime down there. For me, it, it rains, but it, it's it it's seventy five to about ninety all year round. So degree, you know, so even when it rains, it's like it rains for a second, you know, it's wet and then you just go go kick it and it's hot. You know, you still can hang out in, in, in the beach and chill. And actually, the best surfing is during their winter time. So they're opposites. So high season is from December, like right before Christmas, to about April. And then from April to to December, it's kind of low season. So it depends on if you want to deal with, 
a few more crowds or or what you know but it's it's wet it, it, it right now at at the end of high season it gets hella hot it's like dry season and then it gets wet the, i i prefer the rainy season because it's greener like right mm. now it's kind of brown right but mm. and then when it starts raining it's green so i prefer to the, re- the 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 green green and yeah, then also yeah. like i don't be one you know i got when i go i bring my family so i'm like hey i don't want to be out there during the high season i'm let them rooms get full <laughs> no, I feel you. I'm gonna pull up a question real quick. Uh, I was I wondered this myself. I, I might have asked A plus, but um, will there ever be a, a full new Hyro album done? I pray. You know, I think you know we got two cats that don't live in uh, local anymore. They're down in L.A. You know, I really think that Hyro works best not as a send me a file uh type rap you know it's like nah let's vibe let's have you know we got the studio so we got maybe three studios in there let's have all three rooms running and you pop in and chill we up here we doing this shit here you know go back and forth they'll go through a hook on this a plus man let me hear them beats again so i would hope that there's a time and place that we can do that i really hope that once we build this studio out we can get the whole crew because it's enough room for everybody's family right everybody got families so it's enough room for everybody's family that we can go down there, chill, record an album, film like 10 videos, you know what I'm saying, though? Have some people come down and do some wild art type stuff, you know, and and, and, and then drop it all there. Damn near even do um, our first live performances of it there because I'm building the venue, you know? That would be dope. Yeah. That would be dope. Like I said, please use the question feature if you have questions rather than the uh, comments. Thanks. You know, that would be that's – a, that's a great idea. No, I – so who's in LA? Uh, Opio, Opio, and Pep are both down there. Uh, okay, you know, gotcha. Which I mean, it's understood. If you're a rapper, if you're in the Bay Area, unless you're really going hard on your indie grind, it ain't no industry here. You know, like we we are the industry here. You right? are, you're it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's you got you got to get out of here in order to really network if that's what you're into. Me personally, I'd rather just work a regular job and then invest my own money than have to deal with like the the industry shit like you know like it's just for me i can't i don't i can't mix it up with everybody i'm cool with everybody and i don't have issues but it's just easier for me to be on home base and then you know i got my kids and stuff so just being present is hella important like i didn't understand that when i was younger and we'll be touring you know 180 days out of the year but now that you know i mean i got grown kids and young kids but i really feel like the younger kids benefit from my physical presence you know i don't feel like the older kids missed out on anything because they at least had things because i was making money traveling but actually being here and just seeing like the everyday incremental growth of your seeds and stuff i mean come on you you mean i know you you got a, a grandson now like yep. come on don't nothing beat that like be, seeing him and being there and you know what i'm saying like so yeah, of course it's it's rough because we have been underground this whole time you got to do 180 shows to to hit your number goal. You know, you do your numbers anyway. So it's rough being gone half the year. It's probably mm-hmm. rough on your partner and all those types of things too. So I'm 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 enjoying this sort of hiatus or slowdown. And when I say slowdown, we probably still do like 100 shows a year. Yeah. But it's like weekends. You know, okay, 30 days in Europe, boom, come back. 30 days in the states, or maybe do 10 days and then 20 days off. But it, it adds up to about a hundred every year. Yeah, and it's and you know it's it's a kids also thrive on schedules too. So yeah. Oh yeah. Sometimes when that throws things off, so there's a lot. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of sacrifice made made there by doing that. But you know what I mean. Like so, yeah, I'm sure. You know, you're, you're enjoying it, like you said, being slow. But at the same time, you're doing other things. I mean, a lot of artists are taking the time to learn producing and do a lot of shit too during this time. So, you know, it's it's kind of you know you had to learn to adapt. Yeah, yeah. Got got to adapt. Yeah, hundred shows a year. Yeah, hundred shows. I mean that that's that's like a to me the best, right? So that's maybe that's ten a month, right? Eight to ten a month, and you cool. Okay, I'm gone for ten days, and then I'm home for for two weeks. Then I'm gone and then home. I think that's ideal. In fact, there was a time when I was sitting and trying to figure out how to do a season, right, with all the rappers. And so you get like, you got your A listers, then you got your B list, et cetera, on down. And you take these tiers and rotate it so that every, you know, all year round, 30 days a month, it's some fly hip hop shit happening. And everybody can just kind of like hop on and hop off, but like a, a rotating thing, you know what I mean? Like, right, a turkey, right. but that, that kind of crosses. 
So, you know, I go, I do these 10 days and maybe I end up in Oregon, right? And then, okay, Planet Asia comes and takes it in headlines with this. Maybe one of the opener stays, somebody else change. I mean, it's, it's ways to, to move it where I think we can perpetually have some hip hop shit. Like it's some hip hop shit going down every night. But when you, the live show, I think sometimes, unless you're in a big um, market, you don't get those big things except when you're doing, um, what is it called, uh, festivals and all that kind of shit. So right, I, right. I, I'm trying to figure out how to make it so it's always some fly live shit on the tier we're on. You know what I'm saying, though? I mean, I would say, you know, like Rome Streets. You know, you feel what I'm saying, though? Yeah, like uh, good, there's a lot of dope new that, artists out there, man. You just got to listen. I mean, there's a, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like the spot we did in uh, Pittsburgh when we came. Right. That kind of venue. Maybe two nights there if it's sold out, okay? But that kind of, you know, that cool 500 to 1,200, but every night, right? And anybody right. can hop on whenever. And it's just like you kind of just shuffle the deck and put it out there and just come out with these ill-ass lineups, you know? But also, yeah. I think as, as hip-hop fans, I mean, there's ways to do it, too, where maybe it's membership or maybe you can go to 30 shows at this place, but you got to pay for them monthly or some, you know, like we're, we're all looking at different ways to make sure that we sustain this culture. I mean, I mean, this is an important way, right? I mean, you use comedy and inject that with the dope shit. And I'm not saying comedy is your main thing, but you be, be a lot of funny. I'll be laughing at this, but you have me rolling. Yeah, but, I'm yeah. saying, but, you, but it's all these things, but it's from a hip hop perspective. So the culture is still being pushed, even in the name, right? Is you carrying the culture, even if right. everything is not rap, rap, you're not moon, like we're not locking right now, you know what I'm saying? No, like, but you're showing all that, right? You'd be like, oh, dude, this is what I was, I'm getting this, you know, busting these dance moves out. And then, okay, look, this is funny. Aha, remember this shit, you know, but it's all culturally relevant to our culture. And I'm trying to make sure that that sustains because I think the kids need that shit, man. Their culture, a lot of times, is just like mainstream culture. You know, and then mainstream culture fucking sucks, dude. Like, right. it, it, and not it's it's also vampiric and and kind of like uh, pedophilic and shit. Like, there's a lot of fucked up shit going on. I think that we're accepting in mainstream culture, and and I think hip hop is kind of a buffer against that shit. This is what kept all of us <laughs> safe, right? When we was kids, it should be. This is what kept us all safe, and but we also knew the difference between this nigga talking all this gangster shit shit on a record. And, and and being a gangster in real life. And right. also, like, the niggas who was gangsters in real life didn't talk all the gangster shit on a record. Right. You know, I'm not, I won't mention any names of who these rappers are, but most of the rappers you think are are gangsters, nigga, they, they can't do none of that shit. They'll be under the jail. And most of the rappers you think is, is squares and shit. And, you know, they're talking that positive shit and all that shit. Like, you look at their rap shit, you like, damn, I'm glad you made it, you know? So <laughs> it, it, hip hop kept us safe. I just want to be able to contribute to the culture in a way that there's a space and a time and place for the for the uh the young people to experience this culture in the way it's supposed to be experienced and that don't mean in the way i experienced it that just means in the way that that in the spirit of how it was supposed to be experienced of course right? because it was laid out a certain way to us right no biting allowed you know uh everybody gets a chance but if they whack get the fuck out of here you know what i'm saying though like yeah everybody come back. gets a chance though right get spit, better spit. like the cypher you don't be like there's no boxing out in a cipher unless right. two niggas is going at it like, you know, you step back and let them just handle their business. But there's no boxing out. If you and if you whack, let let niggas know. And but it's not personal. You know, like even that's what I love about that battle shit. It's like it's not personal. And and now that I'm seeing these sort of side dramas and all this little soap opera shit outside yeah. the battle shit, it's starting to get corny to me because I'm like, Mayweather isn't not friends with Pacquiao, you know what I'm saying, though? The niggas are multi-millionaires chilling, you know what I'm saying, though? Like, so why are we trying to act like, oh, I can't fuck with dude? Because remember in that third verse when he said, like, all oh, that shit is, is, is leave all the theatrics out of it. No, leave all the th theatrics in it. But when you step outside of that cypher, it should be, man, we all grown people chasing our dreams and living our dreams. Let's be happy and support each other. Right. We don't need that WWF shit going on outside. Because yeah. it's deadly, right? It's deadly. Nah, it's it deadly. I mean, yeah, especially and it's we look back and we can sound now and we were what cats were wild and crazy, but it's like especially especially not at this age either. So it's like everybody try to, you know, get get money. I mean, it's strength in numbers if you know when we're when we're unified, you know, obviously you know it's like shit shit is shit is it's different. It's better. You know what I'm saying? Like when people put their heads together, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta get ready to get on out of here. Fuck yo, what you got? What's the real quick, what's the um 
perfect. Like if the stars align, what's the next joint you're dropping? Ooh, I got this song <laughs> called. Uh, shit, I think we're gonna call it Big Talk. Uh, by me and being the architect, and then that album is gonna come out. Uh, Tajay and the architect present Black Tech, and right now I got a single called In Traffic. I mean, it's not really a single. I sent it to DJs, put the video up, but I really want to drop the album as a full body of work so y'all can cool. experience it. And I got Cy Rock on there, I got Casual on there, and a couple of G rappers on there, of course, and you know, hopefully a couple more little special guests. But really, I'm like, I'm on my '91 shit. I'm on my you know, uh, army jacket kind of forty ounce shit. You know, oh. army jacket forty ounce slash uh, suit, a la a la Kufi. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah. like that that kick somewhere between King Sun and I can yell it. You know, what I'm ah! saying? Like, that's a lot. That's a it's a big distance, but some you know like yeah, right? somewhere. But, but yo, know, hip hop has a wide range. That's why yeah. it's so dope. There's yeah. a, there, that's that's what's so beautiful about this shit. It's there's a wide range of. You know what I'm saying? There's parameters that we should be working within, but there's a wide range within that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So fucking yeah. this is the record I wanted to make probably when I was sixteen or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So trying to drop that. After that, uh me and Breakbeat Lou got an album called The Hop. Man, it's it's ill. It's ill. But I'm that's more about like we got hip house on there. We got uh New Jack Swing on there. It's more about covering all the styles. And and I don't mean in a corny way, right? But covering all the styles that exist, you know, because we, we grew up dancing to hip hop. I got the concept that you don't dance to hip hop. I mean, I guess that's when everybody started smoking a lot of chronic or something. But that's just crazy. The, 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 when, the, the, when the guns came. I, I mean, but look, hey, you watch Throw Your Guns video, though, and they're grooving with the guns, right? They, they, they're too. dancing with the Tech Nine and shit. That's you know? true. So, so, you know, we call it the hop because that's the, the hop part is, you know, hip is the hip is the mentality, hop is the movement. So trying to bring that back and just shit after that you know uh i got one with me and my man mike and ike and and uh, we have no idea what that's called too um and i'm trying to drop some um some soul some mischief shit and some hyro shit so shame them into making records y'all i will I, you know I, what i'm saying I, I, I will i use the platform for something some, for some for some i'll put it to good use yeah. um this week is hyro week for us we had a plus our new show we just we just started Monday, that was talking crazy. That'll be up on the YouTube. Yeah. This will be up on the YouTube. And then Casual drops his new album with Dead Perry on Friday. And um, and he's going to be on the show. That That's a missile on that shit. Man, Casual dude is astounding. Like, if I want to model my trajectory, it will be after him, man. He keeps getting better. But Casual is like, he's like a warrior philosopher. He's like, hold on, let me put this book down and kill this dude right quick. Okay, I'm going to pick this book back up. So his brain is working so much. He's got so much to say and so many ways to say it. It's different. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I, I'm like, okay, well, I can draw buildings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. But Casual is oh, some next level shit with, with the rap shit, dude. It's, casual it's is nuts, man. He's and I mean, bananas. He's the he's, guy behind Hyro Coin and Hyro VR, too. You know, so it's yeah. not just like he's just pure artistry. Like, nah, oh, yeah, no. he's got, he's the CEO of the company. He's creating these business things and all that and all these different models. Can let me say something about that before I dip? Hyro coin. We got this thing called Hyro coin. It's a it's a crypto just like everything else, right? You know, the, all this bullshit you buy in Shiba Inu and Doggy Coin and everything. But what we gonna do with this crypto is create an uh, uh, endowment for the arts, so any artist can can go put their project up for for uh, consideration and get money up to two point five percent. So if we got ten billion dollars, we have to give away. You know what I'm saying though. Uh, what is that? 250 million of it to artists. So we want. It makes sense to try to build this DAO, and, and I That's want you dope. to check out Hyrocoin and, and go on Pancake Swap. Grab some of that shit. Hold some of that shit for real, because we're doing it for. The, so we don't have to have conversations like, oh, I, I wish that these dudes had more promo. Oh, I wish you heard that record. I ain't even heard that record. We want to be able to make sure that people's shit gets pushed, and not just rap music. We support all arts, so dance, visual arts, martial arts, oh, work. design, all arts. So so where can they check it out? Where can we uh, check it out? Just go to hieroglyphics.com, and they got all the information on there okay. about how to get it. But the Hiero coin, the, the, actually, the, the symbol is dollar sign bar, so bar. But yeah, I definitely it, it bars up. Talking, talking to him about that, too, you know what I'm saying, when he, when he comes on. so Yeah, when um, talking to him, is like speaking Greek, man. I'll be like, yeah, word, huh? yeah, sound no, good, I, yeah, yeah, I know. where do I sign? <laughs> yeah, I could yeah, he 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 be over over the heads 
Um, real quick before we get out of here, our upcom upcoming lineup. Like I said, we got casual on Friday. Um, we got our homegirl, um, MJ Hip Hop Connection, the publicist, publicist in the game. Hey. Uh, we got Brother J, X Clan. We got our, that's our monthly show. We got Keith Murray. Oh, wow. Coming up fe February 9th. That's going to be an interesting one. That phone conversation we had to set up the interview was hella interesting. So He's a wild um, cat. He's a wild cat. So, yeah, we're going to have Keith. We gonna have Keith Murray on. Uh, then we got uh, you like grimy. We got a man, Rap Almighty, uh, his group Dirt Platoon out of Baltimore. So um, and then we got Queen Heroin from the Juggernauts coming oh, soon too. Damn. You yeah. really, you really carrying the culture. You feel me? Uh, it's, 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 oh yo! One last announcement: Our show is moving to uh, Beat Miners Radio uh, oh. at, in, in, at the first week of February. So we'll be on. We'll, we'll be doing it, but then it'll be airing on Beat Miners Radio too. Big All up, right. Mr. Walt, oh. people D. That's so, hey, tell them I said what's happening, man. They always been good people. Yeah, yeah, they still they they are good dudes, man. Solid dudes, good good people to work with, man. So it was always a pleasure. We got to build up when you let when you have an idea about Hyro Day, you know what I'm saying? Hit me up. Though, well, well, we know we know it's gonna be Labor Day. Oh, so yeah, we that's got the thing. I, regardless, though, I'm coming out there. Like, if you have around that time, I'm coming out there. So. I, I think if we if we can get past this little weird ass shit that's going on, it's gonna be the biggest one ever, man. Like we we talking to. Some heavy hitters right now, and they they seem like they with it, so it, it should be crazy, man. It's I hope so, man. So yeah, definitely keep me posted on that. But yeah. we're planning on being out there, like small, big, whatever that that is, because that's the time. So so we need to do that shit, and then go go out to uh, uh, Hibiscus Garden and, and and decompress after that's over, man. Hell yeah! I'm with it. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Tajay, episode eighty, carrying the culture. We get this up on the YouTube. Thank you everybody for rocking with us. Every day's fucking high road day, man. This unit, this will be up on the YouTube. I rock with the uh, YouTube links in the profile. Salute. Hey, Thank you. One love, brother. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Peace.